Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, I'm gonna kind of bring you guys along and share with you my process of seven days of fasting. I'm currently on day three. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've been crazy busy and I just didn't have time to actually film the intro, but I have been, I've been filming my progress and there's not a whole lot to it. If you guys look back a little bit, I did go ahead and post a video on my preparation for fasting and I had planned on doing the preparation the whole fast all in one video but it was too much so I decided to go ahead and split that up into two separate videos so like I said I'm on day three and I have been kind of filming I, I filmed my starting weight and my starting um, my starting ketones and my starting blood glucose and I have filmed that on day one two and this morning day three and I went ahead and took a took some before video as well it's nothing like amazing Amazing, but hopefully you'll be able to see by the end of this video that there's some change, especially in my gut. Um, that's the main reason that I went ahead to start doing this is, um, you know, my gut's just kind of inflamed and I'm having some issues, some health issues. And so I figured that I would go ahead and um, actually my friend Heather Cohen is also fasting with me. We're doing being fasting buddies here, doing it for seven days. So she actually suggested it and I was like, you know what? I could use one of those. So <laughs> here we are fasting. I figured I would go ahead and give you some of my tips on how I'm able to maintain a fast. On the first day of my fast it was super easy, super simple. It was, I didn't even get hungry until I had a, a late, large dinner, as large as I could possibly shove in my face. It was, I think it was like a pound, maybe like a pound and a quarter of food, of beef, specifically a steak and then some, some ground beef. And so I wasn't even hungry until 1.30 in the afternoon. Some of this stuff actually just uh, curbed my appetite and it wasn't a big deal after that. And really I have only been infrequently kind of hungry since then. And either a cup of coffee, a drink of water, or some of this stuff has uh, really helped me. I think that a lot of people, myself included in the beginning, mistook, mistook a feel uh, like it's, it's not so much a feeling of hunger, it's more of like an empty feeling. Like you just feel empty. Like there's nothing in there. <laughs> you know, it's not really like hungry. It's certainly not ravenous by any stretch of the imagination. Every once in a while you get like a hunger pain, but it goes away quickly and and then you're fine. You, it's really boring, uh, honestly. You have a lot of extra time. So <laughs> I think probably the main thing that I would, main thing that kind of helps with that is just staying busy. I've been trying to stay busy. I've been doing a lot of editing, editing videos and I'm just getting ready to go into town and I'm gonna spend the evening with my husband and then, um, you know, just staying busy. Really, and if you get your mindset in the right place, you can even cook for people. Like I went ahead and I, I don't think I mentioned in my prep video, but I did cook for my husband um, probably about a week's worth of meals, honestly. About a week's worth of meals, I cooked it ahead of time so that all he has to do is warm it up. And then, so I don't have to actually cook anything. I don't have to cook anything. I, I cook for him because I like to. And he's perfectly fine. He's capable. He can do whatever he wants. He does not require, he does not need me to cook for him. He is a very good cook, actually. It's just something that I enjoy doing. So if you guys are just starting out, you probably want to go with a shorter fast. Get used to intermittent fasting. Get used to maybe skip a day and then maybe, you know, wait a few days, skip two days, you know, kind of just ease yourself into it. You really don't want to jump into it. You know, once you get to like three days, you can kind of do whatever you want, in my opinion and in my experience. I guess the reason that I haven't really brought you guys along is there's not a whole lot to, to to share with you guys. I know that you guys were just kind of interested. Last time I did my fasting video, you guys were like, hey, you know, can you guys do, can you do a video on kind of the, the process of fasting? Uh, you know, bring us along what, for the process, fasting process. So I'm gonna try and do that from now on. I'm sorry I didn't do it from the beginning, but there's not a whole lot. It's just, you don't do anything. <laughs> You just don't eat, you know? And is if you do it properly, it's not hard. It's not difficult. You get tempted every once in a while, but if you, if you get your mind in the right spot and you're just like, I'm just not eating. I'll, you know, I can have whatever I want in seven days. It's all in your head. It is 110,000% in your head and in my head. And if you get, if you get the physical under control, you know, meaning getting yourself into, into ketosis ahead of time, everything else is smooth sailing after that in my experience. And I, this is the second time I've done it. The first time I did a 16 day fast and now I'm doing a seven day fast. I'm on day three and it's it's super easy. It's not, it's not hard at all. I would say 
Kind of one thing that I have noticed today is that my nose is so much less stuffy and I'm not breathing as loudly as I was before. Um, I have been having a lot of issues with having a stuffed up face and just constantly, literally all the time, breathing through my nose is, is still not 100%, but it is significantly better. Last time I fasted, my breathing got super under check and it was my asthma and it got really good. So we're still waiting to get to that point. I'm significantly less inflamed in my gut. When you are fasting for weight loss or when you're losing weight, you breathe it out. You breathe out the, the, the burned off fat. So it doesn't really matter. But if you are fasting, you're going to experience, if you're, if you're properly fasting, you're going to experience autophagy. And that is basically where your body, I don't know the word, I think it's catabolizes bad cells, rogue cells, it gets flushes out dead cells. You know, it kind of just does a clean out of your body. It, you have to make sure that your pipes are moving by whatever means you need to. Make sure you're staying super hydrated so you can keep things flowing. Um, super duper important. You have to make sure your pipes are flowing regularly. I will bring you guys back for, I guess the next weigh in <laughs> or in the next, the next numbers. <laughs> I gotta make sure I bring that with me. I won't be able to weigh myself tomorrow cause I'm gonna be in town, but I will be able to weigh myself the following day. So tomorrow's just gonna be ketones and glucose. Today is day number five of our water fast. I, yesterday, I got a haircut and the gal straightened my hair and I freaking love it. Like, I don't know if the color is gonna come through. So um, once upon a time, I used to dye my hair. This is terrible lighting, how do I get better lighting? I think there was a time where Off Grid with Doug and Stacy and Living Traditions Homestead, they had each done a video on their hair basically being their crown of glory. And uh, there was also some stuff that had happened with my mom before she, um, after she passed away. And I just came to the realization that I wanted to grow my hair out and stop dyeing it. So I've been going gray since I was 18. I kid you not. So this is the first time that my hair is all me. It is 100% my hair. I don't know if you can see the color, but I'm in love with it. Like it is flipping gorgeous. Sorry, I know this is a fasting video, but like this is the video that I'm making after I got my hair cut. So <laughs> I love it. And it used to be, I had it cut about here. It was like belly button level and I had at least six inches cut off and I'm just, I could not be happier with it. It is so much healthier and all the dye is gone finally. It's literally taken like four years to grow out. I didn't count it, but it's taken a long time and it's finally gone. It's finally all me and I'm so excited. So anyways, okay. So a couple things that occurred to me yesterday, I was doing food deliveries and a couple things that had occurred to me um, that I hadn't mentioned was stay away from sweeteners, all forms of sweeteners, okay? Sometimes it can break your fast and trigger your insulin response. But the main thing is, is that it makes fasting miserable. It makes it so much more difficult if you're having a Zevia or if you're having some kind of a, a stevia sweetened electrolyte, okay? It's gonna make you miserable. It's gonna suck, okay? So if you avoid all forms of sweetener, it doesn't trigger your, your hunger hormones and stuff. So you're gonna be, it's gonna be a lot easier. Another thing is just block it out. Block it all out. Do not let your thoughts dwell on food. Just block it out. Like you literally have to, for me, I literally have to pretend that food is not a thing. It's a toy. It's not something for you right now. And so like I was literally, I went to the store and I, I, I bought $400 worth of meat because I'm planning on breaking my fast and going into carnivore and we don't have any red meat. I, I went yesterday and I did food delivery. Like both, I went shopping for people in the grocery store. I picked up people's food from restaurants, smelled it and delivered it just fine. And that's not to brag on myself. It's just, you have to get yourself into that mindset where you cannot dwell on thoughts of food or you will fail. And so you have to get yourself in the right mindset. Like it's almost, it's like a game. It's like a trick that you're playing on yourself. In my first fasting video, I had a comment on there the other day. It was a gal that's saying that, that she had broken her fast. Let me look at the comment. When I broke mine, I ate seven pizzas, four burgers, and three roast chicken, so it was not worth for fasting. And this kind of reminded me, number one, I have no idea how they survived after that. <laughs> that sounds like the biggest gut bomb in the world. Um, and number two is weight loss is not the only goal of fasting. So 
yes, they totally negated the whole purpose of any kind of weight loss that could have happened during the fast. But number three, there are so many benefits to fasting that go way beyond it. So it's not like it was a complete wash. They got all the benefits that go along with it, all the autophagy, all the resetting of hormones. And then they also learned that about themselves. Like they learned that's what they did after the fasting. And so like, how can I fix that for next time? And where I'm coming from is the best thing that you can do to prevent something like that is having a plan and like having the mindset where you're gonna stick with it. For me, I'm gonna break my fast with some bone broth and then I'm going to just have some, a couple of eggs to kind of ease my stomach back into it. It hasn't been a week, so you do have to be kind of careful. After that, I'm gonna have some of the boiled chicken and then for, for dinner, I'm gonna have a ribeye. So that's kind of my plan. And then after that, I'm gonna kind of just take take it kind of easy on my stomach for a couple of days and then um on it right after that i'm actually going to florida so i'm going to be going to the home the gulf coast homesteaders meetup and with all of this over here this is all meat <laughs> that is 119 pounds of meat i got it on an insane sale and so um that's kind of my plan so i have a plan you need a, a short-term plan how to break your fast with, and how to ease back into normal eating my understanding is that the way that you break a fast is you need to ease into it for half the amount of time your fast was so for me it's about three days i'm doing a seven day fast you know you can kind of compromise because it is a shorter fast so i'm going to do about three days of refeeding if you're doing a 40 day fast you need to do it for 20 days where you're just like super slowly introducing foods like you're introducing if you're doing carnivore like i am you would introduce bone broth some egg yolks you know stuff like that and just slowly introducing the more easy to digest foods and then escalating increasing the amounts so factor that into things i i factored that in when i started my fast i was like i'm leaving on this day i need to make sure i have three days leading up to it in order to re get used to things so that i don't have a total gut bomb when i get to florida so i'm gonna stop yammering Today is day seven, it is super late. Um, it was Saturday and Sunday, so I didn't really have time to film much of anything, but there's not much to film because I'm not doing anything but drinking water and coffee. So, but now I am ready to do something and we're getting ready to break our fast in the morning with some chicken broth. So I just have my chicken pot here. I'm just gonna go ahead, put this guy in here. This is a really big guy. Okay, so see you guys back here in the morning where we're gonna break our fast. Are you kidding me? All right, so our bone broth that we made last night is ready. It's been cooking for about nine hours. I set it for 13.30. So, there we go. Just gonna skim off this scum from the top because I was too tired last night. I did not wait for it. So before we, we uh, disturb it, you can see, the chicken is very, very well cooked. The time has come. We're going to break our fast. <sighs> yes. I put the right amount of fast salt in it. <laughs> All right, this tastes so good. Oh my goodness. If you guys would like to know the rest of how I break my fast for the next two to three days, make sure you stay tuned to part three of the fasting series. I had that one just turned into a series. It was supposed to be a video, but now it's apparently a series. A few things that differ in this fast versus previous fasts was I was much more cranky this time. And I discovered why yesterday. So, <laughs> um, and that's also why I ended up having kind of, I still had great, you know, weight loss, not fat loss, weight loss results. Let me see. Okay, so I started at 215 even. So that's, what, 14.8 pounds in a week. That's insane. Uh, not all, not anywhere even close to half of that is, is actual fat loss. But it is weight, it is still weight that I was carrying around that made me feel like crap. It's still water weight, it's still um, you know, it's still inflammation. It's still some fat. It's, you know, it's still stuff that makes you feel like crap. <laughs> so it's, it's still weight that my bones are not carrying right now. So I will take it and run with it. I was just much significantly more cranky. I was much less able to use my reasoning skills to understand why people are pissing me off. Um, 
that was a thing. <laughs> but not realizing that it was, I was fasting during prep week um, definitely kind of explains that quite a bit for all you ladies out there. But it also helps me to feel a lot better <laughs> about my fasting abilities because I was able to fast during prep week, which is normally like you're a stuff in your face during prep week if you are not careful. Um, I'm, I'm pretty good about that. I, I kind of recognize that and, and, and try my best to tone it down, but you know, there's chocolate in the world. So, so if you guys enjoyed this video, I hope you will give it a thumbs up. Uh, this video definitely took quite a lot <laughs> to actually film and make sure that I was keeping track of everything every morning. I'm not that kind of person. So um, <laughs> if you guys are new around here, we just moved to our 30 acre homestead in Southern Missouri. And I'm sharing with you all the things that we're doing to turn our home into a homestead. And it mostly revolves around the kitchen with canning, freezing, dehydrating, and fermenting, as well as sharing with you guys videos on how you can use that food in your everyday cooking. And there's also gonna be some stuff thrown in there uh, with some health type stuff I had originally made a second channel uh, to kind of cover that um, but I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to use that because I can barely keep up with this channel so <laughs> I will probably be popping in a few things because I know so many people can relate to it it's not gonna be like a dedicated you know wellness Wednesday thing it'll just be part of things that I'm doing so if you guys enjoy that let me know if you don't I'll keep it to myself I basically figure if I'm doing videos for this channel and then I'm also trying to do videos for a second channel um, then I'm just good I'm just robbing energies from this channel so um, I just I don't have the energy I don't have the mental capacity to do that maybe someday <laughs> but for now I do want to share my health journey because there are a ton of people who are interested in it and a ton of people who can relate to it and a lot of people who want to know about it so I'm gonna be sharing it in some capacity as you guys tell me what you want to see how about that <laughs> So thank you, thank you for watching. If if all of that random babble sounds cool, awesome, do you click this button right here? This is the subscribe button, so it tells YouTube you want to come back here. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're going to enjoy. Over here is my last uh, fasting video, how to prep for a fast, and then up here is going to be my fasting playlist. So yeah, I created. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.